Welcome to another Tuesday Talk with Ruby Reese. Shortly, I will be joined by Aoife from Give That Paw to speak about a really, really interesting topic, weddings and dogs. Um, to keep this format chatty, uh, we will be making rash generalizations throughout the talk. So if you are concerned about your dog or your situation, please do consult a um, certified professional about it um, because our generalizations might not necessarily be relevant to your own situation. So um, without further ado, I'll see if I can add Aoife. mentioned as well in previous videos if you're joining uh, live feel free to chat among yourselves and help each other out um, because I can see every single one. There it is. Hello Aoife. Hello. How yes. are you doing? Sorry my live just went really weird it, just, it wouldn't work there for a few minutes. That's absolutely no problem. I'm delighted <laughs> to have you on now. Um, would you do me the absolute pleasure of saying a few words about yourself to introduce yourself? Okay, so my name is Eva, and I run Give That Paw, which is dog behaviour, dog sitting and dog weddings, paw dates, which is the new service. We're up and running, maybe we're going on two years now in July. Um, previous background was working in the vets, uh, generally the, the, the summed it down. <laughs> Very good. And we'll be drilling into loads of those topics in a second. So by way of introduction to myself, for anyone that doesn't know me, I'm Killian from Ruby Reese. We set up uh, our company just over a year ago um, because our own dog, Ruby, has sensitive skin, sensitive tummy, basically everything that could be wrong with her is wrong with her. And we decided to cater for that dog market as well, for example, with our 100% fish-based treats uh, that are suitable even for dogs with allergies and intolerances. So um, let's get cracking into our topic for tonight, weddings and dogs. So where did this idea come from? And is this a trend that we're seeing more and more of? Um, it's starting. Dog at Chew definitely has brought a little bit more of an, an outlook onto things now since promoting it a little bit more. Um, it kind of just sprung upon me. Um, I one friend had recommended me to just dog sit and then just bring the dog to the wedding, and just do normal normal stuff, um, as I did. Um, but the dogs actually didn't get into the photos. So after that, then it was kind of like, right, okay, I think people want their dogs at their wedding. I know I will. Um, I know we have chatted about yours because we have to try to get you to renew the vows. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's definitely it's getting bigger. Um, it's just there's not enough people that know about it is the thing yeah okay fair enough and I suppose that that leads on to the the obvious question why would you have a dog at a wedding why wouldn't you is another question <laughs> why That's wouldn't you answer as well <laughs> Oh, and it's it's just nice. Like the, the amount of photos that I have, like of like Murph the Frenchie, God bless them, um, and their owners Michelle. They they provided me with their pictures to do the, the just to get it out there and get it known. Um, and then I have a good few weddings coming up that I want to get more. But it's just dogs are just so cute. So why not have them part of your family? And they're more and more into the family now as well. Again, and more people since COVID have more caring. They're more like figuring out about their dog's mental health you know there's a lot more about that oh know? definitely I think, I think I think you hit the nail on the head there the dogs really are today part of the family um you know it's it's definitely a different story from 20 years ago where the dog was kind of an extra separate thing now a lot of family dogs definitely in our household anyway um Ruby is definitely part of the family so I suppose maybe you could give me an outline of what type of services that you offer and we'll drill down into different bits and pieces then um like the journalistics would be kind of like for photography is one um involved in majority of the photography the videography as well um going down the aisle 
bringing down the rings. Um, I've had a few people that have said that to me. Um, it's generally, and then another one as well that I have is, is a day. It's not a fitting one, but the dog gets involved in the whole day. The first look, the, the throughout the bride getting ready, um, the groom getting ready. So I'll be literally like the photographer following everyone, trying to bring okay. the dogs to everyone. So it's quite but yeah, it's everything. Quite a broad, encompassing service. So, okay. Yeah. And um, is there then an option to have the dog minded after the wedding or how does that work? Yeah, so it, it it would be roughly what I would do is three days is the max that I will do. Um, so it'll be like the night before the wedding, the day of the wedding and the day after. So yeah, it'll be kind the, day, of, the day two is all important these days. Yeah, in the yeah, yeah. But then again, it could be the morning of the wedding yeah. and then... The, the day after their home that morning but there's but you can provide some level of flexibility anyway yeah. with that service that it's not yeah. just because yeah. you decide to have your dog at the at your wedding doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be at every part including the wedding right no, no. and for the dogs that are anxious and overwhelmed by a lot of people like seeing that to a lot of people at dog issues like if your dog is too overwhelmed and too overstimulated you're better off just go, go and doing the photography and then just leave an after Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I suppose you have to, as well as considering all of the wedding plans, what you'd like, you have to keep, um, people need to keep in mind the needs of the dog as well. I mean, um, even just the, the absolute basics, you know, the walks, the feeding, the water, the yeah. the breaks away from people and breaks to do whatever business they need to do. I suppose that's yeah. uh, something that well, we all do need a break. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I suppose, like you mentioned, faux photography. So this, you know, we're we're definitely speaking to the the right public here. The the Instagram crew yeah. on live on Instagram. Uh, everyone knows that the photo, you know, every photo speaks a thousand words, and and they're also important for our visual society. So I suppose, do you think a lot of dogs need? Would you provide training then beforehand? Would dogs need training to be able to sit and stay? I suppose. For the photos, they'd have. They definitely would have to know a few basics if they want the dog involved in a lot more stuff. Like I had a client that's booked in for a full day, but I, like she wants involved in absolutely everything. And she, but in fairness, now she did say you have a hotel room to yourself for you and the dog. Just go and relax whenever you can, whenever you want. You know, toilet breaks, stuff like that. And she has like she's like even for my own sake because I'll be literally nine that morning. They're probably nine that evening. I don't know. It's so, like I have to take my own breaks as well. But uh, you know, the fog photography it depends on the dog, and then the training depends on the dog as well on the, the level. And I suppose even if you have a dog that will normally sit and stay, you know, um, I'm not a trainer, but I've I've spoken to to you and to other trainers often enough to know that you know it's this is a very a highly stimulating environment that they're going to be in. It's not going to be your average, you know, living room situation. It's not even going to be just uh, as exciting as the park. It's going to be way, way more than that, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, it, it depends on the dog. If the dog is very social and very used to people, it'll be fine. But if the dog is jumping up on people at home, guaranteed it's going to be jumping at the event. Might not want to be on the white wedding dress no. then. No. Yeah. We've had an instance, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. So, so definitely worthwhile thinking about. And um, I suppose things like even bringing bringing the dog up the aisle. This is not something you want to try out on the day of the wedding. You know, the dog bringing rings up or something. You know, imagine the wedding ring is getting lost. So, and do you think this is going to be an essential part um, for for the wedding service as well? I suppose it's so crucial in the wedding, isn't it? It is, but like well, like I've suggested to a few clients, if they want a dog to just run up the aisle just for that split kind of two seconds with that bit in that in their wedding video, is what I was saying to the one of the clients is me let the dog run and then I'll run the whole way around to the very top and grab the dog from there. So at least then there's not this big commotion of me running up the aisle as well after the dog. See, that's and that's the it, I think this is where you need to get a professional involved because I wouldn't even have thought of that. I think about going through, you know, the hundred hundred step plan on how to get the dog to bring the cushion of 
of um <laughs> of rings and how do they balance that in their back and stuff I'd probably go down a rabbit hole so it's brilliant to have then you know a professional on your side for a situation like that to be able to say listen it'll be so much easier if you just get the dog to run up yeah. and like you say it'll be in in all the the um, videos and everything I think it's a brilliant idea by the way I didn't never even answered the question myself about why dogs at weddings I was at a wedding with dogs um and yeah. Um, it was brilliant. I, I thought the best thing about it, to be honest, was the the icebreaker afterwards that you could, if you had to talk to a stranger that you didn't know, had nothing in common with, you could just say, geez, wasn't the dog brilliant going up the, you know, or something like that. that it, but it's it all kind of, um, conversation starter as well. Like, you're like, oh, did you see that dog out there? Yeah. Or, like, look at that. It was the same in dog attitude. It was like, oh my God, look at that dog. Or it was like, look at that bandana or look at this. And I, it's, and it's I think all something- exactly. Yeah, and I think something like that really does kind of help relax the whole situation. People realise that it's not as formal as they might have expected. And, you know, they can just take a exhale a little bit. Um, yeah. So it's really, and of course, having having just that split moment where every single person to your wedding is a big smile on their face. I think that's mm. what everyone wants for their wedding, isn't it? It's the happiest day of their lives. Like I always, I either, when I'm texting clients and I'm trying to get like the actual like, description of them and I'm like trying to put special day as well as wedding day and pop place in and there's so many different keywords that you have to like throw in but it's a special day it's a wedding day it's it's your day absolutely I think that's an important mm-hmm. takeaway is you should be able to make it whatever way you want it to be and have those important parts of the family with you um and so we mentioned a little bit about photos and videos get the eye so do you think every part of a wedding is suitable for a dog? And then would there be a difference with church weddings and, say, a civil ceremony? Um, do you envisage there being parts that are more suited than less? It's, again, it's it's depending on the dog. Does the dog like people, first of all? It's the major thing because there's going to be millions of people trying to pet this dog. Um, is it used to being touched? You know, is is the dog used to noise? Is the dog, you know, it, there's so many factors for a dog, especially with their body language showing. Like people don't pick up on their body language a lot, you know. And like you can you can sense a human's body language very easily. But if a dog is overwhelmed, people go, oh, he's fine. He, he's yeah, fine. yeah, he's fine. Yeah. He's not fine. You yeah, know. Sometimes they internalize it a lot. Yeah, yeah that's that's very yeah. yeah. Or it's the human I think inside. And I suppose logically, um, even even the part during the dinner would be a brilliant time during the during the day to for the dog to get a break, to get their own food, or mm-hmm. to to maybe even depart and and leave. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. It's it it's it, 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 everyone needs to take breaks. It's like we take a lunch break for our work. So yeah, if the dog is working. It 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 has to take a break. Yeah, exactly, and then. Um, so I suppose we mentioned a lot already about the photos and the different parts. So, um, do is is there a solution out there already for dog apparel, dog accessories to do at weddings? Um, do you have do you have something cooking there? We have a I've a few I've a few from Waggy Tails Fashion, and then we have Be Possum, and then we have Woodle. So we have three. So I actually got like, we got new leads. I haven't shown you these. Uh, Louise dropped them over to me at um, Dogitude. But it's such a cute lead. Brilliant. It's so, and it's, it, there's matching, um, there's matching leads to go with it. Yeah. And it's so Brilliant. cute. But it's so nice. Same at Woodles and stuff. And then you have your bandanas, which are absolutely amazing. And um, oh, this one. This one was the highlight of Dogitude, was Flower Pup. That was the highlight. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they can all be hand, or not, they can all be um, fit size. And then yeah. you have your little tucks, which won't come out. There it is. And then you have your little tucks. Okay, and I suppose a couple of people watching this might think it's ridiculous and that's fair enough. You can design your own day the way you want. But uh, in another sense, if you're going to do it, you may as well go all out, mind you. Like it's, uh, there's definitely... But it's just something cute, like a little bandana or a little white colour. Like, you know, 
But everyone's getting all Betsy and it costs a bloody fortune. You've got to support local. Absolutely. And you mentioned some brilliant companies in there that we, we really love as well. So um, it's great to have have kind of local companies that, that could be involved in your wedding. And like you say as well, a little a little flower, a little bow isn't going to be OTT at a, at a place like a wedding where, where hats and suits yeah. are often the norm. Yeah. And number one wedding thing, where's my hat? That's it. <laughs> I suppose like one of the things so when, when should people get in touch with with someone like you a professional dealing with the dogs on on their special day what part of the process like do they should they be doing this before they make huge plans is this something they should be doing after they have the venue what's what are your thoughts there yeah it- it, it generally, see, I have people booked in next year already. I have about three booked in next year, and then I have about three booked in this year. Um, because I do training also, I have to scatter it out, so I'm getting enough for my training clients, I'm getting enough for my my dog sitting clients, my check-in service. Um, so it's kind of getting that in as well. You know, it's it, at least, I would say, three months, four months in advance, I would need up to a year. Um, okay. so Book them in. I suppose even even on on a you know a logistics point of view as well. Um, if you're going to have your dog, it probably should be planned in from the beginning, maybe because you know if you're if it's an afterthought, maybe the location isn't great with dogs. Maybe you know there's just probably a hundred and one things, isn't there? Mm-hmm. There is definitely making sure you're, you're the, the wedding venue, even if it doesn't, if it even isn't pet friendly. Just asking for on the grounds because then you can get involved in the photos of like when you when you finish your wedding you go do them after photos. At least a dog can kind of go quick get in for two photos and then I can go gone. You know, exactly. at least they're taken there. home, taken care of, yeah. and that could I suppose be be really good for for dogs that mightn't love big crowds. Um, mm-hmm. And as soon as we're on that topic, what types of dogs mightn't be suitable for 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 a wedding? See, varies again. It, it varies on the, the the dog's temperament, the personality, the way the dog was brought up. There's a lot of behavioral stuff behind it, you know. And it's definitely if it's not me, that's the client that they're they're coming if they're not trained with me, but their trainer is telling them exactly what they need to do to tell or tell me what they have been doing with their dog. Um, but it, it it really varies. It's the hyper dogs that are always the ones that are like, oh my god, there's my owner. I haven't seen it in twelve hours or two hours. Oh my god. You know, it, it it can vary. You could have a really, really good dog, and then on the day, it's like, oh my god, there's so much people. And I, you know, yeah, yeah. And I suppose the energy levels could be play a role as well. I mean, if you've got a super, super energetic dog, is one thing. But what other people mightn't think about, I suppose, if you've a really old dog that, um, or you know, that that doesn't yeah. have the energy for it. But another thing is, is if the ca- if the dog is not good in the car, there's no point either. Yeah. dog has to travel to the venue then I have to bring the dog from the venue back now obviously my car is well it's two dog sick and dog here but at the same time I don't want the dog nervous going to the venue and then it just ruins kind of the dog thing in a sense yeah yeah exactly and I suppose like what's what's your process with the customer then I mean uh, I presume this isn't the case of, of someone sending you an email and saying hi uh, I'm I, I hope to have my dog at my wedding what's the price uh, I think there's there's so many movable parts here what uh, what how should someone get in touch with you and what details should they be providing the form on my website on the Paul Day section will have the wedding venue and or even if they're an emailing me privately that's completely fine it has to be, I have to have the home address, I have to have the venue address. And then I have to kind of, then I have to put in my special costs, then I have to put in the same costs, and then I have to put in the actual call date service if I'm there for how long is an extra on top of that as well. So it's it's like I could say roughly for two days could be 200 euro. You know, it, it really varies of their venue, the pretzel between the venue. It's, um, it's very, very hard. I do have a lot of people that would text me and go, oh, uh, venue's here and I'm like yeah okay where's your home address <laughs> so I have to yeah. travel and, and then all the, the other things as well like if they if they really really want the dog to play you know um, a big role in the wedding and they know that the training needs to be involved in that and everything that's going to to all be part of the package as well so I suppose like they there's so many movable parts that it's it 
they have to give you as much detail as possible. And then would you have a consultation with the with yeah. the dogs as a phone call or what, what's the kind of um, next step after that? Yeah, the meet and greets basically. It's it, what I would, char- would charge them for the meet and greet is fifteen. So the dog is okay with me first of all, and then is okay with them with the venue is okay. I'll go through all that with the people. It'll be nearly like a training consultation to make sure everything is okay sure. um, mentally um, and emotionally. So. And then go from there then and then pre book them in, take deposits, so on and so forth. Yeah, very good. Okay. And um you mentioned locations. So is this something you're doing very locally? Is this nationwide? What's no. <laughs> I had a, I, I have a, I have another dog person that is from Limerick, I think, and wants me to travel up to me either or paint or cabin. One or the other, but yeah, it can be anywhere. I think as much as I'm trying to stick to life for clients, which everyone thinks I'm crazy, but it's outside more Leinster now. I'd say I'll get more. I could be down in Cork one day. I could be down. I could be in Galway the next. It really depends on who wants me and they want to pay. Definitely. And you know what? You're too right as well, because it's beautiful locations scattered all around the country. You'll be able to see all the, the lovely places that Ireland has to offer. So, uh, exactly. I'm there for Monday as well. That's it. Yeah. You're, you're, you're actually doing this because you're hoping that, that people want uh, weddings in Spain, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, no, actually, I did have a girl in a dog or two come over to me. She was like, no one does this in Spain. I want this. Because she actually had flown over. I think they were here for the week or something. Um, and she was like, oh, my God, I want this in Spain. And then me and Kieran were like, hmm. <laughs> could we there think about it? Could, could, could be an option. Okay. Um, very good. So you're not counting anywhere else. And this is definitely open to 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 a lot more um, a lot more people than in that sense. Very good. And um, you, you mentioned Dogitude, so that, that was obviously the event that you were most recently at mm-hmm. and, and kind of launching the, the service. So did you have any uh, funny or interesting reactions? Because we all, I, I think if anyone's listening to this point of the video, um, you know, they're, they're, they're probably interested in understanding what you do. But were there any um, unusual sets of feedback? <laughs> Yeah, a little bit, and I had said it to a few people that like the sign was lovely. I loved my sign. My dad made it for me. There's a picture of Michelle and her husband and Murph, and had a few people come over and be like, "Um, you marry dogs? Like, okay. Can you can you not can you not see like there's two people on the look and there's a dog, and it says wedding service." Not dog wedding service. Yeah, it just, he, he just, I just, I just was like, right, just go away, just, just, just keep walking because I just can't deal with people like that. I was like, if I was marrying dogs, it would be dog minister, but no, no. Do you know what? There might be a market for that. Is that yeah. what people are looking for? I don't have time for that. Unless someone else wants to do that, that's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> and talking about branching out, I suppose if this uh, if this is a roaring success for you, would you think about doing other events like big birthday parties, um, you know, business launches, movie premieres? I don't know about birthdays. I don't think people. Well, they probably would, but it'd be like just to bring it for like five minutes. And I just don't see the point. I think weddings, because people love their dog, and like the many people I have kind of briefly heard over the couple of years. Of, had my dog at the wedding and it was so good and the pictures and this and that you know and it, and it was just that that feeling of like if I get if I get married if I ever get married um that I want my team at my wedding oh definitely I think it's it, it's such a brilliant idea like just uh from weddings that I've been at with with dogs involved I think it's uh it's like I mentioned there's just so many benefits to it even <laughs> Yeah, even even from the just the, the guests that mightn't even have an emotional attachment attachment to the, the specific dog, you know, um it's just it lightens the, the mood for everything. Um yeah, exactly. Definitely. So do you have uh, do you have any any words of advice now from, from your last couple of weeks and you know, talking to people and everything? Is there advice for, for newlyweds now on on their road to or not newlyweds, sorry, but to be wed? Yeah, <laughs> just be organised. That's the number one thing. It's just be organised. And if the venue is too far away, if your dog is not is car sick, there is plenty of other options. 
um, like Airbnbs is what I've suggested to a few people or hotels or something that's nearby. But yeah, just definitely be organized and definitely book in as soon as you can. Um, yeah. And if I'm not available, I have another company that I, I will pass on to as well anyways. So, but yeah, now get yourself organized. If you're thinking, if you're even, even if the slightest bit of you is kind of like, hmm, will I get my dog involved straight away? Just text me because I can either help you think the positives and the negatives I won't be kind of going no you have to get your dog involved I'm like no like I think about I'm the advocate for your dog so it's brilliant and I think I think that's um that's really refreshing that you know there's there's someone there that that you can just get in touch with and see what the options are even if you think "Mm, I'm not so sure maybe there's like you mentioned there might be an opportunity to get them involved for a little segment of the wedding um or maybe there's there's ways of making things possible like you say like breaking up a trip a little bit yeah um to to make it happen yeah for sure Very, very good Thank you so, so much for coming on and talking to you. Do you have any closing thoughts on weddings and dogs to, to share with us? I think so. I think so. We covered it. We covered it. Well, I can't wait to have you back on now in a year's time once we have loads of uh, stories from the weddings <laughs> to, to share exactly. with us. Exactly. Exactly. Loads of pictures. Brilliant. Thank you so much for, for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. Love the idea of the new service. Can't wait to see what's what's going to come out of it. And um, guys, if you uh, would like to follow Aoife, it's at Give That Paul. If you're not following us already, we'd really appreciate a, a follow on at Ruby Reese Official. Thank you so, so much. And I hope you go and enjoy your sunny evening now. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks a million. Bye-bye.